Right now, I'm going to show you how to create atmospheric effects such as smoke, steam, and mist in Photoshop. In this Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the cloud brushes as well as how to create your own brushes. Now to make things a little bit different, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start by showing you how to use them and then I'll give you a link where you can download some and then I'll show you how to create them. That way if you just want to use them and you don't want to create them yourself, you don't have to watch the whole video. However, if you do want to know the whole process, I encourage you to keep watching. And by the way, if you're new, consider hitting the subscribe button so you don't miss any tutorials from me. So here's an image I created in 3D and I call this one killer chest because we got this kind of dragon. But what I want to do is add the atmosphere with the smoke and the fog. So what I've got here is two different layers. We've got our background layer, which is a fake eclipse. I just created that one. And then I've got my 3D object. Let me hide the background so you can see. Now, the reason I've got this on a separate layer is I can apply some smoke behind our object as well as in front. Now, if you're working with a photograph, cut out your subject and just float it above the top and that way you can put it a little behind. So why don't we start by creating a new layer and then we're just going to just give it a little bit of haze. So what you want to do is you want to grab your brush and then under your brush, you're going to go down and you're going to choose the cloud brush here. These are the Photoshop Cafe cloud brushes. I'll give you guys a link where you can download these. And all you want to do is select one of these, maybe the cloud or the soft fluffy, whichever one you want. And let's just choose the black. And then what I want to do is make this one just kind of like a, a light gray. And one of the things a lot of people fail to do with their clouds is build depth by using lights and darks. They just go with one tone and then they tend to look kind of flat. So we want to avoid that. The next thing we want to do is go under the brush settings and under the brush settings, if you're using a Wacom pen, which I am, I encourage you to turn on a couple of things. One of them is we're going to turn on shape dynamics and we can set the pen pressure to size. And the other one is transfer. We can set it to opacity. Now I'm going to go backwards and forwards with the size. Initially, I'm going to turn this off, but then we're going to go back to it uh, regularly. So we want to lay down a base of atmosphere. Now, make sure you turn your opacity down quite low, around 20%. Your flow around about 10. And if you hit the left or the right bracket keys, you can make the brush bigger. So we want to start with a big brush and we're just going to paint with a very low pressure. Now, if you're not using a Wacom and you're using a mouse, Consider dropping that opacity down to about 10%. Okay, so I'm just going to gently, I'm just kind of dabbing a little bit here just to kind of add a little bit of just base atmosphere. Now we'll work on this a little bit more as we go. Now it doesn't necessarily look like a lot's happening, but if we look at it before and after, you can see we are actually reducing a lot of the contrast in this area by doing that. Now let's create another one above the background and underneath and then this will just add a little bit more haze and this is kind of just putting it behind our object now one of the things you might notice i just went really big there is i'm dabbing with this i'm not dragging even though i could drag i'm dabbing and by doing that you're just bringing up more of a realistic kind of a cloud texture all right so we just kind of set that overall just kind of a haze see that behind and in front. Great. It's just building atmosphere. Okay, now we want to start building things up a little bit. Let's go a little bit darker. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to start to build some of this base here. Now I'm going to take my opacity up a little bit now, maybe around about 30%. Now the gray is not going to show as much as, you know, when we use the white, you'll, you'll see in a little bit. But I just really want to just kind of build this up a little bit. And notice I'm concentrating a lot where it's lower. You can put a little bit bit higher, but really a lot of this mood we're going to create is by having this nice and low. Almost like a fog, even though it's a smoke. All right, let's have a look and see where we're at now. That's what we've added. Great. Now we're going to go in and we're going to choose a really light. In fact, why don't we go all the way up to white 
and I'm just going to hit the left bracket key a couple of times, make this a little smaller. And let's just start to just tap and you can see how the white really just pops. And this is why I was kind of building up a little bit of a base before I went into the whites. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just kind of just going in between some of these. Once again, keeping this low, but I'm definitely keeping it around the objects. This is good. This is, we're getting somewhere. And once again, I'm just tapping or dabbing this on rather than um, applying it heavy. And let's go quite large and I'm just going to just give a little bit of atmosphere in the front. Notice I'm going very, very large and just tapping just to kind of pop that in. You can see now we're starting to get this hazy kind of smoky look. And if we look at this before, there's the background and there's more in the background. Okay, let's tap the background here. We're going to add a little bit more haze in there too. And this is just going to give us a little bit of atmosphere. And it also creates a little bit of separation. Now I want to go in and use some darks. Let's go into this very, very dark. I'm going to use some black. And I'm still working on the background. So I'm just kind of dropping that in there. Just kind of just putting a little bit of darker in there. And let's also do that on the foreground. Just a little bit. Now I'm not going as dense or as much with this. Now let's make this a bit smaller. And what we're going to do now is we're going to turn on our shape dynamics. And this means that I can vary with the pen pressure. So I'm actually going to go a little bit darker in here. So on the left is where the light is hitting. On the right, we're more into the shadow side. So I just, I'm kind of painting in between. And this is just going to allow me to have some kind of almost like light streaks coming through. You'll see, you'll see what I'm doing in a little bit. So now I'm just kind of going at that angle and let's flip around and let's go back to white. And now I'm just going to do the same thing. And I'm just kind of letting that kind of pop through in between and concentrate it more on the facing side. Now let's add a little bit. I might actually go a little higher of the opacity. And this should have my pressure turned up. Yeah, I want a little bit of rising smoke just kind of coming out of the dragon. So I'm just going to kind of let that build up a little bit. And notice what I'm doing there is I'm making it go kind of more on a curve. It's not just going straight up. It's kind of wrapping around. If you look how these kind of things work, you'll, you'll see they vortex a little bit. And if you feel like it's getting too strong in some places, that's okay. We'll come back. But see how I build it up at the bottom? And then you go a little bit lighter, a little bit smaller as we go higher. And it goes deeper as it is at the bottom. All right, and let's add a little bit more larger brush and just kind of dab in here a little bit. All right, let's see where we're at now. If we look at this, there we are before. There's our background haze, and there's a little bit more in the foreground. Now what you can do when you're happy with, you know, your overall kind of look, now we can start to minimize it around some of these objects. So what I'm going to do is create a layer mask. And with that layer mask selected, we want to work with black. And I'm going to take the shape dynamics off again. So it's going to be a fixed size. And I'm just hitting the left bracket key to make it a bit smaller. And I'm going to drop the opacity down. And what I'm going to do now is I paint with black on that mask, it's going to remove some of the smoke. Now I'm using the smoke brush, so this will maintain that texture or that pattern. But what it means is now I can kind of make these objects protrude because the smoke would go denser as it gets further away from the viewer. And this way it can also make it look like it's kind of going around some of these objects a little bit. See what I'm doing? I'm just painting it away.
All right. And so this is one way of using this. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly show you how to create some clouds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a gray. Let's turn on the web safe color. And we're gonna take that light gray. Let's take our opacity all the way up to 100, bring the flow down to around about the middle. Make the brush a little bit bigger. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna to start to plot this out with the darker colors or the darker tones. So we're laying down a little bit of a shadow that might be a little dark, so let's go in between the two. And yeah, there we go, that looks good. And so we're just putting this, it's gonna give us some realism. So the light's gonna hit the top part of our cloud. So let's go for a much lighter tone now. And then we can start to just kind of hit our top areas there. And you'll see by varying the size and varying the tone, we start to get some pretty good realism. You know, once again, if you leave it one tone, it is just gonna look very, very flat. And then whereas here, as it goes into the crevices, it starts to look darker. Let's give it a nice white where the sun's really hitting this. Maybe a little larger. Let's go a little bit bigger and I'm gonna bring that flow down just a little bit. There we go. Maybe not quite that big. And you can see as we're starting to vary the tones, you can see we start to have a more realistic cloud because we're building up the density with different tones. Once again, the mistake a lot of people do is they try to do everything the same shade and it just looks very flat. All right, let's have a look and see how we can create one of these cloud brushes. By the way, if you want to download a set of cloud brushes from me, head over to photoshopcafe.com forward slash vault which is where I have the vault set up with a whole ton of goodies, including these brushes, also a bunch of presets, actions, eBooks, and a whole ton more things for free. So just grab those. So we're just gonna create new, and we're gonna create a new document. And why don't we choose black as our foreground? So let's just go under the general brushes. We're gonna choose a soft round and create a new layer. Now we're gonna be painting with black. Make sure flow and opacity are turned all the way up because when you create a brush, it's very, very important that you uh, create as much contrast as you can. Okay, so let's make our brush about this big. We've got about a 150. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click once to apply it. And let's just kind of tap a couple of times. So we're going a little bit in a semicircle. Now what you want to do is choose white. Let's make this brush a little bit smaller. And now I'm just kind of going on the edges here. Just varying the size a little bit, just kind of softening it up. And you're just getting a kind of a shape like this. Let's go for a bit more black. Go in there so it's just not too uniform. So we're getting kind of an interesting shape. Let's just blur the whole thing. Choose filter, blur, Gaussian blur. All right, great. So this is gonna give us a kind of a softer cloud. Okay, so let's make a selection around this, making sure that we're getting the whole brush. Yeah, you definitely don't want edges in there. And let's choose edit, edit define brush preset. And control D to turn off. Great. See, that's nice. There's no weird edges or anything going on there. That's going to work perfectly for us. Okay, great. Now I'm just filling everything just back with white so we can start to test this brush. Okay, what we want to do now is let's drag out our brush settings. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to turn on scattering. And we want to set this to both axes. And let's scatter this up. Notice what's happening there is this will spread it. And let's change the count to two. And now if we start to paint, you're going to see what's going to happen. Now we don't have to work with black anymore. We can work with a gray. And I can make that brush smaller. And you can see, all right, we're starting to get somewhere. Now we've got more work to do, obviously. Let's go into the brush tip shape. And one of the things we can do here is we can adjust the spacing. So now when we start to paint, see what it's gonna do, it's just gonna give us a nice little bit of spacing. Great. 
couple more things. We want to go into shape dynamics. And under the shape dy dynamics, I want to change the angle jitter. I'm going to put that all the way up and notice now, instead of all going one way, it's going to change the angle of these. That's perfect. That's what we want. And give the roundness jitter just a little touch, not a lot. Now, the other one we want to adjust is the size jitter. As we increase this size jitter, it means we're going to get different size brush um, kind of effects here. Let's go back under the uh, transfer. We want to turn our flow jitter up quite a bit so we get a little bit of variance there. Now, jitter just means uh, randomness. All right. So let's see where we're at now. Let me just erase all of that. And there we go. See how now we're starting to build up a little bit of smoke. Maybe make it a little smaller. And there we go. So that's how I create these smoke and cloud effects inside of Photoshop. So I hope you found this useful. If you learned anything new, let me know in the comments underneath. And by the way, if you're new here, welcome to Photoshop Cafe. I do a new tutorial every week. Hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications so you don't miss any of my tutorials. And if you like this, smash the like button into dust. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.